hear people ask, how did you manage to get such a pastor in your church? Because people, many times I kind of sense a jealousy from other churches. Like, how do you have pastors like this at Mavuno? And I just proudly say, you know, we're just blessed like that. I mean, God just, it's, it's just how God chose to bless us. And so Mavuno, I know you are blessed too, to have this person as your pastor. And I want you to give a very special Mavuno welcome to Pastor Simon, the man, Bevy. Woo! Let's appreciate our pastor, Mavuno. To God be the glory. Pastor S, we can't wait to hear the word that God has for us through you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Moridi. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for those kind words. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, it's been a blessing to be part of this church. Uh, gotten lots of blessings from here encouragement, family, uh, people that have become my very close friends. I am just blessed to be part of this. Um, <clears throat> I want to share today something that will encourage us as we move forward. Um, just be in prayer for me. My wife and I have been coughing the last few days. In fact, she's not in church. Uh, she's pretty unwell. But we believe that she is healed, and I am healed as well. Uh, and I will be able to bring God's word. Let's just close our eyes and pray as I bring to us the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, we just want to thank you that you've brought us this far. Look what you have done. Great testimonies are in the making. Some are already done. And there are many more to come. And we are just grateful that you are our father. The Lord, you never leave us alone. You're always holding our hands and going to war with us for our families. So as I share this word, as we celebrate today, and then go into it the rest of this year to see freedom for our families, I pray that faith will be stirred up inside of each one of us. We're going to get out of here ready for the miracles, ready to see what the Lord will do. And so may your word be powerful as we declare that which you have done. And thank you for this celebration day. In Jesus' name, amen. I've been blessed to talk to many people about praying for the family. Many years ago when I was still in high school, the Lord just spoke to me about praying for my family. We are many of us, as I've said before, 20, uh, 20 of us. And I began to pray because only two or three of us were born again. I began to pray that God would visit our family. The rest of them were lost, many of them in darkness. My mother had come to know the Lord. My father had already died at that point. And I really began to pray that God would visit our family. And I came across a story that we're going to share uh, briefly. But let me just say what God did in my family to give you encouragement that God will and has visited your family. Within a few, after visitation, I had a, a, a time of visitation of the Lord, a time of, a, a, I would call it a vision. And God spoke to me and said, all of your family will come to Christ. And I began to pray for them. And what had looked like impossible, within a few months, began to turn around. Those who were lost the most were the first ones to come to Jesus. Some of them in very miraculous ways. I remember how my sister, who was uh, uh, really in darkness, came to the Lord. After uh, this visitation of the Lord, I went to her, and I did what Pastor Cynthia did. And I held her hand, and I said, I would like to lead you to Christ. She broke down, began to cry, and she came to the Lord. The following day, one of my other sisters did the same. I went and visited her in Langata, held her hand, talked to her. And she got born again that day. And as a re uh, after that, just one by one, they began to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, the 20 of us in my father's family are all born again. All of them. God is for the family. We have had a conversation of how we open doors for the enemy and how he gets in. And he's always trying to get in because he wants to spoil the beauty of family, the beauty that God has given us in family. But we have also talked about how to close those doors. And today as we celebrate, I believe we are here to celebrate 
a time of simama for the rest of this year for our families. I believe that victories will begin to be experienced. I believe the stories we have had today are only an introduction to the many stories that we are going to have the whole of this year. If you believe God is going to visit your family, would you give him a shout of victory this celebration day? Are you ready to recover lost ground? Are you ready to bring your uh, relatives to Christ? Are you ready for reconciliations to happen in your family? I believe we are ready. That's why we are in white in celebration this Palm Sunday saying, Behold, our King comes. But let me give you just a few practical things to begin to do as we close this series. You know, again, I believe God is for family. Passover or Easter is next week. And as I thought about Easter, I thought that when you look at it in Exodus, it was actually a deliverance of families. Families got in together in the house, and then they put blood on the doorpost so that the angel of destruction would pass over. And as many families as put up the blood on the doorpost, they were saved. And so many years ago, there was a declaration that Jesus would come and die and would be the savior of the families of the earth. So as we celebrate Easter next week, remember that. We started this series with the story of Gideon. I love Gideon. And Pastor Moretti talked about it. The Midianites have been sitting on the Israelites for like seven years, impoverished them. They are destroying their produce. They can't even have anything to eat. They were just completely impoverished. And they began to cry out to the Lord. They began to say, God, we need your help. And then God sends a prophet. And he comes to them. He says, you know what? God actually wants to deliver you. But you have opened doors for the evil one by worshiping other gods of Amorites and the others. And so you need to do something about it. And then he decided, let me go to the solution of this problem. He goes to Gideon, young man, young warrior, hiding somewhere. You remember Pastor Marie talked about how he was threshing wheat at a wine press. Now, as he said, wheat was supposed to be threshed high in the mountains where there is wind so that the chaff will be carried away. But Gideon is in the valleys where wine presses were trying to thresh wheat there because he's hiding from the enemy. And then God comes to him, this guy, hiding from the enemies, and tells him, mighty man of valor. Calls him mighty man of valor. And he says, wrong address. <laughs> Look at me. I am not that mighty man of valor. He protested. He said, that's not me. And he began to give reasons. And by the way, we don't even see God moving. You're calling me mighty man of valor and saying you're with us. But look at what we're going through. Look at the problems we have all around us. Then he was told, I will use you to deliver Israel. He said, look here. I am the least in my father's house. Our clan is the least in the tribe that doesn't even lead. In other words, God, I am not even qualified. This is not me. Find someone else who has the qualifications. But God says, I'm not calling you because you're qualified. Your greatness will be because I'm with you. It's me and you. And as we go together, we're going to make the, diff uh, the changes. Let me tell you, Mavuna, as you go to your family... Some of you, your family doesn't have major issues. Some of you, the family has giants. You look at them and you say, now me? Maybe you're even the last born. And you're thinking, how am I going to lead my family to deliverance? And God is saying, don't worry. I am with you. I'm with you. Look at your neighbor and say, God is with you. And then Gideon says, if I found favor in your side, wait here. Look here. Look at this story. I really love this story. He said, okay, I see that you're saying some powerful things. I don't fully believe them as well uh, as yet. But wait here. If you are who you claim to be, wait here. Let me come back. And he goes and he brings a young goat and prepares an altar there and, uh, you know, gives an offering uh, to the Lord who is speaking to him. And the angel took his staff touched uh, what had been prepared, went into flames, and then Gideon realized this is actually God. I am with God here, so I could go and do what I'm being asked to do. And after realizing that, 
The story continues in Judges chapter 6, verse 24 to 34. Listen to this. <clears throat> so Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. I love that. To this day it stands in Ophra, the Abysrites. Same night the Lord said to him, Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one seven years old. Tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Verse 26, then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on top of this height. Using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down, offer the second bull as a burnt offering. So Gideon took Ten of his servants, not this, he never went alone. Ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family and the townspeople, he did it at night rather than in the daytime. Can you see the mighty warrior, what he's doing? He did, he did it anyway, but he did it at night. He was still afraid. In the morning, when the people of the town got up, there was, a, there was Baal's altar demolished. With the Asherah pole beside it, cut down, and the second bull sacrificed on the newly built altar. They asked each other, who did this? When they carefully investigated, they were told, Gideon, son of Josh, did it. The people of the town demanded of Josh, bring out your son. He must die, because he has broken down Baal's altar and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. But Josh replied to the hostile crowd around him, are you going to plead... Baal's cause? Are you trying to save him? Whoever fights for him shall be put to death by morning. Turn it around. If Baal really is a god, he can defend himself when someone breaks down his altar. So because Gideon broke down his altar, they gave him the name Jerubal that day, saying, let Baal contend with him. Now all the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples joined forces and crossed over the Jordan and camped in the valley of Jezreel. Listen to this. The Spirit of the Lord came on Gideon, and he blew the trumpet, summoning the Abyssalites to follow him. And not just the Abyssalites. If you read further, many more tribes came over, and he had such a large army now following him that God said, these people are too many. Let's reduce them. Three things to note as we go home to fight. Number one, Gideon was sent home. He's being told, go and fight for your nation. I have a calling for you in your nation. But then, then he's told, before you go to fulfill your calling for the nation, go home. Go home and destroy the altars that are there. And that's what we have been learning the last uh, few weeks, 12 weeks. That there are altars of the enemy. There's pride. There's false gods. There, there are lies about us and about God. All of those things. And Gideon was told, go home. Go and destroy those things. You have a calling in your life. But you're not going to be free to do it until you destroy some things in your home. And this is what I like about it. It never went alone. I believe all of you are in life groups. And if you're not, I want to encourage you to be. Because the battle that still continues, even after these 12 weeks, what we are going to be doing the rest of, of the year is together as groups. He took 10 of his young men, his life group, and they went at night, destroyed the altar. They began to pray. And then you know what happened later. There was resistance. But this is the point. Don't do Gideon's action alone. Do it with others. Pray with other people. Keep in your small groups. Continue to pray for the different things that you are experiencing as a family. God sent Gideon home, but he never went alone. He went with some group. Number two, after destroying the altar, there was reaction of a tribe. Now, it destroys an altar that God has already said, this is why you're in trouble. You're worshiping Baal. So the people should rejoice. But they don't rejoice. Look at me, my friends. When you go home to destroy the works of the enemy in your family, not everybody is going to be happy. Not everyone is going to give you a high five and say, wow, what a good job. There's an enemy there who is going to push back. 
Some people may even hate you. Your father may tell you, who do you think you are? What do you know? You were born the other day. You are my child. What are you? Who are you coming to tell me to do this and repent about these things? You may find some resistance, some pushback. But this is what I like about this story. God gave favor to Gideon. Look at what the father said. I mean, the father suddenly, his eyes are open. And he gives an argument that cannot be refuted. He said, all right, guys. My son did this, but let me ask you, who fights for a God? A God should fight for himself. So why should we do this? And eventually, they let him go. You're going to find some resistance, but there's going to be victory. Number three, the third thing that I see here, and I love this. Freedom at home enabled Gideon to lead in the nation. He went home, destroyed the altar, then suddenly he was released. And the Spirit of God came upon him and became a leader in the nation. I know some of you, you're calling to be a business leader. You're calling maybe even to marriage. You're calling to other things. Has been hindered by some of the things at home. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I believe this year, national callings for you will be released. God will bring you to what he has always created you for. You will begin to see doors open. Opportunities come. Marriages begin to happen in your family. Why? The enemy is out. And it's time for you to fulfill your calling. This is what I'm saying to Mavuno. It's time for Gideon's action. What is Gideon's action? A call to go home. And begin to practice what you have learned. And so you're asking me, what's next? Let me tell you three things. Then we go into prayer. Three things, practical things to begin to do. Number one, Gideon build an altar to God. An altar is a symbol of prayer. An altar is a place where human beings meet with the divine. So it's a place of prayer. He built one before he went home. He went home, he destroyed one, and built another unto God. He destroyed the evil one and built one unto God. Start focus pr prayers. Begin to pray for your family. Talk to your siblings and ask them, what are the issues in our home? What can we begin to pray about? For many years, I've taken every Thursday as a day of praying for the family. Every Thursday, I set aside that time and I begin to pray for the family. I mean, they are all born again, but the enemy is not asleep. He's still attacked. So every Thursday, I pray for the family. You could choose a day when you focus on praying for a family. Eva here talked about Sundays, 8 p.m. when they pray together. You could also take a week of prayer with your family members. Are there some who are born again who can join you in prayer, whether they're here or in another country? What if next month you took a week of fasting and prayer and invited all your siblings and said, could we take a week and pray and seek the Lord about our family? Could we have a time to pray? My family, uh, one side of a family, my mother's uh, ten of us, we meet Every, uh, every year we meet three times for prayer meetings where all of us, 10, and our families gather together and we spend three hours in prayer, three times a year. Now, you may not be there yet, so start where you are, but I'm giving you an example. We meet together and we have joint prayers. There's a plan of prayer for us to sustain the family. So consolidate your prayers. Continue to pray. This is not the end of it. Build an altar because it's Gideon's time. Number two, let me tell you this one because it's important you do in the next one month or two. Family gatherings. Organize a family get-together. This is what I call a real Gideon action. Maybe invite them and tell them. Maybe they like nyam chom and tell them, could you come over? We eat nyama, but you know what you want. It's not about the nyama. Or you tell them, uh, you know, I have a new house. I want to dedicate it. Could all of you just come over? And then you turn it around to be a time of Gideon's action. Whenever I'm invited, I've been invited to hundreds of Gideon's action for families in many places. And these are the four things I do when I go for Gideon's action. Five things. Write this down so that you may do in your home. Number one, when the families come together and everyone is there, some are born again, some are not, some are skeptics, some want to take some booze even in the family, we gather together and we begin to talk. 
And then this is the first thing I ask them when I'm invited. In fact, it's very important when you go for this gathering to invite some of your friends from the life group or Pastor Njoro or any of the other pastors to come and facilitate. Because whenever I go to these families, I don't belong there. So I have freedom to say some things. So I stand there and I tell them, all right, uh, I, I see you have a wonderful family. Let me ask you a few things. What are the things to give thanks for in this family? Thanksgiving. That's where I usually begin. Let's begin to thank God. Can, can you guys just tell me what are the giftings in this family? What are the blessings? What are the positive things? Let's talk about them and let's bless the Lord. And always they'll be talking. You know, the father will start or the mother or someone else and say, let me say how much I appreciate this family. We'll have a time of thanksgiving. Secondly, we'll have a devotion. Usually I share the story of Gideon. Then I talk about my family and talk about the things that I discovered in my family and say every family has its demons. And I don't know about yours as a family, but here are my demons in my family. This is what we have dealt with. And I talk about some of the things we have talked about. Maybe pride, maybe false gods, maybe witchcraft, maybe other things. Uh, and I give that devotion and say, we are here together. We want a great family, but there are some demons we need to kick out. There are some doors we need to close. So I talk about that. And then thirdly, I ask them, all right, now that you have heard, I know all of you want a great family. Let me ask you, what are the issues in this home? I've told you mine and what you have had to deal with. What are the issues in this home? Or maybe if you're the one leading, you can say, mom, dad, siblings, I know we have had challenges here. What are those? Let's talk about them so that we pray about them. Then they'll begin to talk. Recently, I did one at a place where only one person was born again. And the person who invited me wasn't even a Christian. He just came across my little book, Gideon's Action, and invited me. And uh, he's the one who started when I asked this question. He said, you know what? I suspect there's witchcraft in this family. Would you pray for us? And I saw the father looking around, a little uncomfortable. And then eventually he raised his hand. He said, son, can I talk? And he said, actually, what he's suspecting, I'm the one who brought it. And he said, this family doesn't know but I deal with, with witchcraft. And I want to apologize to the family. And then something just opened up. One after the other, they began to say things which were prayer issues in the family. They talked about generational patterns. They said, Pastor, pray for us. It was interesting because the next point was repentance. The next thing you do is repentance. I told them, all right, we've talked about things we have done that we ought not to do. Could we pray? And the father wasn't a Christian knelt down and every other person knelt down and the father led in a prayer and said god forgive me for bringing witchcraft to this family and then others just began to pray there was a time of repentance and we prayed all of us kneeling down at that point doesn't have to happen that way but i'm giving you an example and we cried out to the lord to forgive us this is one of the ways we close doors lord forgive us this is what we have done this is how we have opened doors it was interesting in that family, as we all said amen almost an hour later, seven members of the family, starting with the father, gave their lives to Jesus that day. Come on, give a clap to the Lord and celebrate him. <clears throat> but we just ask God to repent, uh, to forgive us. And so that's a good thing to do when you gather together, but after the conversations of the issues, and then at the end, this is what we usually do. Finally, after all of that, I tell them, all right, can I lead you in closing the doors we have opened, denouncing the curses and pronouncing blessings, in denouncing the evil things that you have invited in the family? And I tell them, would you pray after me? And many times they would because they want to see the family change. Or oh, I pray over them as well and declare blessings and destroy the works of the enemy in that family. All right. What if in the next few months you began organizing for family gatherings in your small group? You say you are going to start and we'll go with you to your family. And you, you go next, we go with you. How can we organize these Gideon's actions in our families? And I know the uh, leaders are ready if you invite us and we have the time we're ready to come and pray with you it's time for Gideon's action number three 
So number one, have concerted, continuous prayer. Number two, family gatherings. Now some of them could have a bit of fun. Uh, you could do some bonding, some prayers, you know, some other conversations that you want to have, reconciliations, whatever it is, but regular family meetings. Number three, be the family you want to have. Be the family you want to have. A lady came to me and said, you know, I am not even talking to my father because he did something really crazy. But I'm praying that God will unite our family. And I say, your prayer cannot be hard because you're praying one thing and leaving another. You don't want to talk to your father, but you want unity at home. And I told her, you've got to be what you're praying. You know, align with your prayers. If you're praying for unity, work for unity. If you're praying for reconciliation, be the one to forgive in the first place. Let me read this scripture, then I'll say a few things as we come to prayers. Be the family you want to have. <clears throat> Romans 12, 14 to 21. I love these scriptures. You can read them later slowly. Bless those who persecute you. Bless, who, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with the people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone, anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone in your family, I add. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it's written. It's mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Three things that you could do out of those scriptures. Number one, I encourage people to work for unity in the family. Do everything to be a peacemaker. If there's someone not talking to another, be the first one to call them and say, guys, could we sit together? Could we talk about this? If someone doesn't want to talk to you, go and visit them. Do the opposite thing. Don't say, he doesn't want to talk to me. I will not talk to them. No. You're destroying your very prayers for unity that you're praying. Be the one to work for unity. Rejoice with those who rejoice. When one of your siblings gets a baby, go there and celebrate the baby. When someone uh, has been to the hospital, go and visit. Work for unity. A while ago, God convicted me because I was just feeling our family wasn't very united. And then I just thought, but I go for three weeks without calling some of my siblings. I go for two months sometimes, uh, having not visited some of my siblings. And they live in Nairobi. And I just began to think, I am praying, but I'm not acting towards my prayers. So I began to regularly call my siblings and go and visit them. Work for unity. Number two, operate in the opposite Spirit, where there's hatred, show love. Overcome pride with humility, criticism, with affirmation, isolation, with community. I mean, do the opposite. The Bible says here, overcome evil with good. Let me give you this story as I close. <clears throat> Cousin of mine, I went to pray with her family. And she said, you know, I think I'm going to quit on my husband. Because he has become really not good. He's very rude. He's emotionally abusive. I really just want to go. And the lawyer in me said, yeah, let me help you move. <laughs> you know, let, let's get out of here. That was the lawyer in me. Let's, let's protect you. And then as I prayed for her before I left, I felt God was saying to her, before you leave, have you lived as a wife God calls you to be? This man has hated you. Has abused you emotionally? Have you loved him back? And she said, no, I can't love a guy who is doing that. I said, all right. You have your calling to love. Why don't you spend the next two weeks before I move you out, if you need to move out, uh, to protect you? Why don't you spend the next two weeks to love on this guy in a way you have never loved him? I asked him, when is the last time you made pancakes for him? He said, I can't remember. He said, do that. She said, I will try, but two weeks. After that, come back. 
When I came back after two weeks, she met me at the door. And she was so happy. She gave me a big hug in the village when you do that. It's a big story. She gave me a big hug. And she said, sit down. Let me tell you the story. The first day, uh, I made a meal that I had not made for years. I decided to love him. Not for him, but for God. And then he came home. He looked at it. He never even ate. He went to sleep. I said, that's okay. I'll keep doing it. The second day, she did the same. The third day, he ate and said thanks. After two weeks, he came home early. And he knelt down. Just before I went home, he knelt down. He said, lead me to Christ. You have talked about Jesus. I have seen him in two weeks. Right now, he's an elder in a church. As we speak. <clears throat> Operate in the opposite spirit. If someone doesn't like you, like them. Love them. Overcome evil with good. Number three, make sure there's social welfare. The Bible says help those who are needy. Make sure in your family nobody hangs out alone. No medical cover and they are struggling on their own. Look for ways of ensuring your family is together. Pray and act. Faith without actions, it's dead. So I stand here today and I say as we go into prayer, we're going to be praying for you that the power of Gideon will come upon you. Each one of you as you live here today, you're going to be a Gideon. You're going to your home one step at a time. You will do a gathering. You begin to pray. You will do a visit. You will begin to do something in faith that God is going to visit our family. And you're going to believe that God has equipped you. You are Gideon. You may be the last born, but you're Gideon. Go to your home and see what the Lord will do. <clears throat> Nehemiah 4.14, the Bible tells us, after I looked things over, Nehemiah said, <clears throat> I stood up and said to the nobles, to the officials, to the rest of the people, don't be afraid of him. Don't. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. And fight for your families, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your homes. This is a charge I live with you. As you go for Gideon's action, focus on God. Don't focus on the mountains in your family. Don't focus on the issues you have had to deal with. Don't focus on the cancer. Focus on God who is great and is awesome. He wants to give you a story. Focus on the almighty God. The one who is more than able to do everything you want to see happen. In your family. If my family is the one that is born again, 10 of us preachers, all of us serving the Lord, there's a God in heaven. Focus on Him. Focus on God who is able and awesome. He's going to be with you. And then, number two, get annoyed. Get annoyed with the enemy at home. Go to war. Begin to say, no, this is not going to happen in my family anymore. Broken families, no more. Cancer, no more. Generational patterns, no more. Nehemiah told them, if we're going to rebuild this city, we've got to start at home. You never take a city without taking families. He said, go to war, but fight for your families, for your daughters, for your sons. Go to war. I dream of the end of this year. When we come to give testimonies, I believe as we stand here, as we do at the end of every year, we're going to have so many Simama stories out of this Simama year. I believe some of you who have waited to be married for a long time, this is going to be the time the journey will begin. I believe cancers will be healed. I believe issues will be reversed. I believe in that God of Gideon visiting every single family of us. He's a God who is able and he's going to visit us. Focus on God and go to war. Are you ready to recover your families for Jesus Christ? Are you ready for Gideon's action? I ask you. Are you ready to go home and say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in my family? Are you ready to gather your siblings together and begin to pray? Are you ready to reverse the blessings? 
Are you ready to release everyone in your family to their calling in Christ Jesus? Let's pray. Joro, Pastor Joro. Father, <clears throat> I really just sense the power of your spirit. Lord, I've seen you deliver hundreds of families. You've done amazing things that I couldn't even have time to talk about. I've seen you change some entire families overnight. I've seen you heal in a prayer meeting in a family. I've seen you raise up the youngest of the family members to be the ones who are going to turn things around. I've seen you do amazing things. And I know, God, you're going to do it right here. This year, we're going to have so many stories as we do Gideon's action. So our eyes are on you, Lord. We look up to you. Put your hand on your chest right now. And begin to say, I am the Gideon. Begin to pray for the blessing and the anointing and the power and the courage which was upon Gideon. And begin to say, I will be the Gideon who will go to my home. Come on, open your mouth right now and begin to pray over yourself. Come on, I want you to pray that God may give you the grace, the strength. That God will anoint you, even as you become the Gideon of your family right now. Come on, just pray over yourself right now that God, I go forth in the victory of the Lord, in the boldness of the Lord. And God, I pray that you're going to use me, Lord, to break chains, to bring down strongholds in my family. Lord, I want to declare that, Lord, you're going to use me to move the mountains in my family, Lord. And God, it shall end with me. Lord, the issues in my family will end with me in the name of Jesus. Father, we love you and we worship you for your presence, for the anointing of the Lord in this place, O oh Lord. And I thank you, Lord, because I can already sense there is a spiritual shift, O oh Lord, happening right now in Jesus' name. You are replacing fear with boldness, O oh God. Many of us had resigned and given up, but right now we are charged up. We are saying we're going to go for what the devil had taken away from my family. I'm going to go forth and declare life towards, uh, to, uh, to whatever that was dead in Jesus' name. I'm going to go forth and rebuild what the enemy has destroyed in the name of Jesus. Father, I want to thank you for the faith, O oh Lord, in this house this morning. We love you. We worship you. As we're getting to pray... In the morning when I was praying, I saw a vision of women who need to stand in the gap of the, the ladies in their family. It was so vivid. It was so like a picture. It was real. There are some women in our service today. Anytime a girl reaches teenagehood, there is a sort of like a spirit of rebellion that comes in. And there are signs of sexual promiscuity that starts to show up. But as I prayed in the morning, God told me, you know what? It shall end with my people. You're going to bring a deliverance. You're going to bring healing and victory over your family in Jesus' name. No longer will young girls be pregnant in their teenagehood. It shall end with you. And so today as we come to commission you, I really saw it in the morning. That as you go forth and start praying for your family, as you start doing the Gideon's action in your family, God is going to give you victory in Jesus' name. You're going to see the ladies in your family behaving in a certain way, becoming godly women of God in Jesus' name. If you believe with me, say amen. I saw some men who need to stand in the gap of their family. The spirit of polygamy is actually destroying the marriages and the family and the family the, 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 the families in your clan and i saw it again so vividly and god is saying stand in the gap for the families stand in the gap on behalf of the men that every single man in your family doesn't keep one wife but this morning is our morning of victory it's our morning to overcome it's our morning of deliverance if you believe say amen 
There is another group of people I saw in the morning as I prayed. There has been strife. There has been bitterness and anger and unforgiveness. And actually I saw a, photo, a, a picture of people hugging one another as you are praying over them. I saw you raising up your hands. And as you did that, people were not talking to each other. Who are hugging and coming together. And they were saying we are family. And you know it is you. Your family has been under strife. Always there is a reason as to why people don't have to talk to each other. But this morning, our God is able. Reconciliation and oneness. This day will start flowing in your family. In Jesus name. If you believe, say amen. And so this is what we're going to do. The pastors and the prayer counselors are going to stand in the aisle and here in front. And I want to call upon the prayer counselors, the zonal leaders and the pastors to come. And this is what I want you to do. I asked you last Sunday to come with something that signifies an area that you need deliverance in your family. And either maybe it's a photo that you have on your family. You're going to come with it. Look for a photo, maybe a family photo. And I want you to come with it and say, you know what? This is the one thing that is plaguing my family, that is destroying my family. Would you help me pray? And as we, we are commissioning you, because this Easter, starting today, we are commissioning every one of you to be a Gideon. That you shall go to your family and say, it ends with me in Jesus' name. They may not be ready maybe for reconciliation, but you'll go to your home and make a prophetic declaration and say, Lord, I have come to my family. As I stand here, I am claiming my family for Jesus. I am claiming victory in Jesus' name. I've been waiting for the pastors to come as I speak. So pastors, zonal leaders, and prayer counselors, if you can just take your position. I believe today is the day in the name of Jesus. So you're going to come to the prayer counselor, to a pastor, look for something. To some of you, maybe there are marriages that have been destroyed. Remove your ring and come with it and say, this ring represents marriages in my family. They are not being, they are not thriving. Every marriage in my family is struggling. Would you pray over this ring signifying marriages? Maybe you need to take your wallet and say, you know what? Businesses in my family have been destroyed. Would you stand with me in regard to the financial prosperity of my family? To some of you, you're going to come with your photo and say, I want you to pray for salvation in our family. Stand with me. Commission me. Because as I go, I want to trust God for salvation. Before you come, I want you to bow your heads in prayer I want, as I pray for you. Listen. To many of you, you cannot go forth and declare victory if you yourself you have not experienced the grace of God and the victory of Jesus Christ that he gave us on the cross and even as Pastor Simon was sharing you are like I want to do that I want to see my children live a better life than me I want my children to live a better life than what our parents the kind of a life our parents lived but maybe you have never given your life to Jesus and this morning, even before we commission you to be a Gideon, Jesus wants to reach out to you. He wants to save you. He wants to give you victory. He wants to give you a new life, eternal life. He wants to give you boldness to live a life that He desires for you. And maybe you're here, you have never given your life to Jesus. Even before we pray for your family, God wants to save you. God wants you to experience His love and your grace and his grace over your life you have never given your life to the lord lift up your hand wherever you are you know that this someone is for you god has been convicting you that something needs to change in your family but victory begins with you change begins with you transformation begins with you you cannot give what you don't have you cannot go in your own power you need jesus and today God is calling you and he's saying, why don't I partner with you to bring freedom over your family? You have never given your life to the Lord. Maybe you backslid and today you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Lift up your hand wherever you are. I want to pray for you. You're saying, Pastor, pray for me. That is me. Pray for me. Just lift up your hand high wherever you are. 
I'm going to pray for you in the next one minute. And we're going to pray. Thank you. Thank you. Where? On that side, yeah. Thank you, sir. I can see you. Uh huh. I can see you in the middle. Anybody else? You're saying, pray for me, pastor. I need victory. Thank you, my sister. Anybody else? You're saying, I need, I can see you, my brother over there. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? You're saying, I can see you. You're saying, yeah, pray for me. I need salvation. I cannot pray for my family if I've not experienced the grace and the power of God over my life. Pray for me. I can see you, brother. I can see you, brother. Thank you. I can see you. Thank you. I can see you. I can see you, brother. Thank you, sir. You're saying, hey, Lord, save me. I need to experience your power and your grace. I want us to help our brothers and sisters say this prayer. So all of us, let's say this prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. This day, I surrender my life to you. I invite you into my life to be my Lord and Savior. I confess all my sins and I ask you for your forgiveness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give a round of applause to Jesus? Amen. Everything that Pastor Simon spoke this morning is in this little book, Gideon's Action. It is going for 300 shillings. I have it in my car. I have it in my bag. It is one of the books that has really changed the way I pray for my family. If you can get it, buy for your parents, buy for your brothers and your sisters for only 300 shillings at the info table, you can get it. So we want to invite you for prayer. I pray that we shall pray for all of you in the next couple of minutes so if you can just come with your photo with a ring with a wallet whatever that represents an area in your family that needs prayer and the pastors will be praying for you for the zonal leaders the prayer counselors and the pastors we are just anointing them i know we are prophets but uh just declare i speak freedom over your family in this area that they're going to mention in jesus name amen so why don't you just start coming as the worship team leaders in a worship song just start coming there are people in the middle there are people at the back so you don't have to come all the way to the front we have prayer counselors at the back at the middle here in front we have so many people start coming to anyone just start coming come with a photo of your family come with a ring come with a wallet come with anything that you are saying hey pray for me pray for me i need prayer i need prayer as we sing it's not over the service is not done, so please sit down and enjoy uh, even the worship. It's not over. The service is not, not over, so please, over. you can just sit in and... Uh, we're going to make a declaration throughout the end of the service. Don't go. We still have a couple of more prayers we need to make. We are just anointing you very quickly.
A love that's never failing Let mercy fall on me But everyone needs forgiveness The kindness of a Savior The hope of
he can move the mountains my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave all right we are we, we will not stop we need to pray for every one of you even after the 12 o'clock but i want us to say a prayer and then we'll continue praying for as many of you so right now there is a prayer i want us to to make if you can just put it up this is a prayer of declaration that we are freed that we're going to experience the victory of the lord if media so you can put it up the prayer you can just turn it down the music as we say this prayer amen are you ready to say this prayer and then if you're not being prayed for don't go we shall be here if you need to whatever but we shall be here to pray for every single one of you because if your family is delivered the nation of kenya will be delivered amen, amen. because the transformation of a nation starts with a family and so let's say this prayer together in jesus name one two go is that where it starts no whatever is born of god all right okay someone needs to give me a sign if i can just study from there or as we say this prayer and as we continue praying for as many people media shout all right okay good one to go mavuno let's declare by faith that this is our prayer that we are ending simama but it's a beginning of a new season in jesus name a season of victory and freedom for our family let's go together one to go whatever is born of god overcomes the world i am born of god and i have overcome the world this is the victory that overcomes the world even my faith i want to thank you god that you always cause me to triumph in christ and i want to thank you god for giving me the victory through my lord jesus christ i thank you jesus that you are my savior thank you that you are my baptizer in the holy spirit that you are my healer that you are my deliverer and the provider for all my needs i thank you jesus that i am free no longer in bondage or slavery to anything or anyone i am no longer a victim but a victor aha uh -huh. thank you jesus that according to john 8:36 i am free and whom the son sets free aha uh -huh. i am not stuck in my life but i am growing and moving and changing i am free to grow in god i am growing in him every day i am free from all mental and emotional bondages such as depression oppression grief guilt and broken heartedness i am free from all unforgiveness bitterness i can't hear you mavuno hatred self and forgiveness god and forgiveness and unforgiveness for those living or dead i am free from all fatigue tiredness insomnia and weariness i am free from all addictions and destructive habits i am free from all sexual problems and impurities i keep my mind pure i am free from all spirits of infirmity sickness and disease i am free from spirits of death and suicide i am free from all poverty lack and death 
I lose prosperity and all my bills are paid in Jesus name I am free from all strongholds and bondages in my life I am an overcomer in every area of my life I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ I boldly declare Come on, Mavuno! Let's say that together. One, two, go. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed in Jesus' wonderful name. Woo! Continue coming as I bless you right now. Father, I bless your people. You are free indeed. You are free from every day.